First thing I want to say, uh, I'm, I'm just gratified by this amazing turnout we have here tonight. Um, so if anybody doesn't have chairs, we're, we're organizing more chairs at the back there, so uh, um, uh, you all have a seat. And uh, I know, uh, you know Nathan organized a phenomenal food tonight. Don't worry, we're not taking it anywhere. It'll be available uh, at the end if you feel you need a top one. Um, okay. Well, firstly, I just want to say welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming this evening, because today is a historic day. Today is the birth of an exciting new futuristic Jewish education institution. I also want to thank uh, Temple Israel New Rochelle, firstly, for hosting this evening, and secondly, for hosting our school. We're looking forward to a long, fruitful partnership with Temple Israel. Secondly, I know all of you have plenty of questions. We've been bombarded with questions. But uh, all of you got a, a, a goodie bag tonight. Um, and in that goodie bag you'll see is an index card. Uh, a little bit later in the evening, people will be collecting index cards. So write your questions on them. Write your name and your email. Don't worry, I won't, I won't speak out your name when uh, I read out the questions. But if you write your name and email, I'll get back to you if we don't cover your questions tonight. So many people ask me, how come you're involved in Westchester Torah Academy? You have a job with a lot of responsibility. You have five kids, six years of, uh, of age and under, twin babies, you're building a house. Where do you have time for all of this? And the reason why I'm involved is because this is a cause which is very close to my heart. I, uh, when I was younger, my family moved from uh, South Africa to Australia. At that point, we had a change in financial condition. And uh, I was unable to attend the Jewish day school. You know, I was in the wilderness for many years, and then, uh, you know, later in life, I went to Torah, became a Baal Tshuva. But I more than anyone know how important a Jewish education is to Jewish continuity. And affordability should not be a barrier for people to access Jewish education. We intend to create a school that will inspire children to a committed Jewish life. The interesting thing is the more, uh, more I learned about the solution that was being pioneered by Herr Tid in New Jersey, the more I came to realize, hold on, not only is this a more affordable solution, but this is a superior educational option. Who would have thunk it? Cutting edge innovation coming out of New Jersey. <laughs> I know, it's shocking, but you know, all kidding aside, I'd want to wish a kola kabod to, we have the board members of Yeshiva Hatid here tonight. Uh, everyone give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> we want to thank you for your leadership and bravery for pioneering this innovative education solution in the Yeshiva world after watching the, the pioneers in the secular world like uh, Rocket Ship in Silicon Valley. On reflection, it's not surprising that technology has made education not only more cost-effective, but superior. Whenever you go out and buy a laptop today, you will see that that laptop that you buy is not only half the price of a laptop that you buy 10 years ago, but it's also lighter, faster, and has more memory. Technology is awesome in making things not only more cost-effective, but superior. But I want to emphasize that the blended learning educational model is not all about technology. There is 75% face-to-face learning and 25% online learning. And that 25% is critical because it enables the teachers to, get, uh, to collect assessment data on the children. They're then able to use this assessment data to provide a customized education to, to our children. And as uh, Harvard Business Review noted, that a customized, personalized education produces two standard deviations higher results in terms of producing a quality education. I'm a graduate of Columbia Business School, so a high quality education is very important to me. I in my early years, I was never an amazing scholar. You know, I could, I was, I could read fluently by the age of five. I was always a math whiz. I never got amazing grades in school. And I could tell, I was never, I was never the kid who was engaged in class. I was, I was always bored by the teacher teaching to the middle and ignoring the kids at the bottom and the people at the top. When I look at my kid, who is a lot like me, I can see a lot of similarities. You know, when he gets his half an hour homework every night, he's six years old, you know, getting him to sit still and do his homework <coughs> is very difficult. But you know, he can spend hours playing on his iPad. 
And his favorite iPad game right now is an app that enables you to, uh, to create your own storybook. You know, you drop down backgrounds and characters and props. And he's creating his own story. He, little does he know he's learning independent thinking and creativity. And, uh, you know, it's funny, the other day he told me, Dad, I'm writing a story, I'm going to upload it to the internet, I'm going to sell it for money, and then I'm going to buy more Ninjago characters. <laughs> As if he doesn't have enough of those. <laughs> Children love technology. After I bought my first iPad, my son copped it very soon. Then I bought, okay, fine, I've got an excuse for iPad 2, I've got an iPad 2. Then my four-year-old daughter got hold of that. So fine, I got the iPad 3. Now I'm sharing that with my three-year-old. <laughs> Soon after my wife had twins, I said, Amy, we better stop having kids, kids so quickly. Apple can't produce product faster than <laughs> At starting the school, the hardest task was finding the right principal. We reviewed many resumes and stayed up late at night interviewing many candidates. However, we were very pleased with our selection. This is despite the fact that he made us drive all the way to Poughkeepsie on a Saturday night to meet him at a Dunkin' Donuts. Oh. You cross Poughkeepsie off my bucket list. <laughs> but the thing that we really saw eye to eye immediately was the importance of developing 21st century education skills in our children. Things like teamwork, collaboration, independent thinking, communication skills, analysis. These are the skills that our children need to develop in order to be successful in life. I've worked in many blue chip companies and I've done recruiting for many blue chip companies and these are what they're looking for. And this is what our principal believes in and what our school will believe in and what we will focus on. What we also like about Rabbi Strasberg is that he's very professional, very organized. He's got uh, six years head of school experience. So we will run a very tight ship at this school. The other thing that we like about him is he is a great musician. We will have a school with a lot of work and music in it. But more importantly, the thing that we like a lot about Rabbi Strasberg is that he's a great guy. A school run by Rabbi Strasberg will be a, uh, a loving, nurturing, caring environment that all parents will be happy sending their children to. In fact, when we did our background check on Rabbi Strasberg, we called his Rebbe from YU, Rav Simon, and the first thing that he said was that Rami is a mensch and he has a lot of chayim. And these are important qualities we think in a principal. So with that, I'll, I'll stop talking now and I'll introduce you to Rabbi Strasberg who will tell you all about himself and our new school. Yeah.